Right, today I've come to Oakham in Rutland and I'm enduring the pouring rain to see Oakham Castle. So Oakham Castle was established just after the Norman Conquest, it's probably about 1080, which I guess isn't just after, it's about 14 years after. Um, this was to keep the area under Norman control. Normans built remarkable castles. They weren't the first people to build castles in Britain, but they were first to make them truly effective uh, with their Mott and Bailey style. This castle was owned by the Ferrer family, and that's probably why they started a tradition of collecting horseshoes from other peers of the realm that passed by their castle. Ferrer being very similar to Ferria, people who make horseshoes. It's kind of a pun. Their coat of arms is in fact a load of horseshoes. This great hall is all that's left of the old castle. It's actually built in about 1180, not 1080, um, but it's still one of the earliest examples of secular medieval architecture in Britain. The tradition of giving horseshoes to the castle goes back to at the very least the reign of Henry VIII when it is mentioned in one of his court records they make particular reference to a horseshoe that was given by Edward IV, which is absolutely massive. It's about a yard across. Uh, and when it was originally made, it would have also been painted and have the coat of arms of England on it. Unfortunately, rust did for that. You see, the tradition was that the horseshoes were nailed to the castle gate or the castle door. But as you can imagine, iron, rain, they don't get along, they rusted. So a lot of the truly old horseshoes are unidentifiable and in many cases barely identifiable as horseshoes, let alone who gave what to whom. Well, we know to whom it was given to these guys, the uh, Lord Ferrers. Fer Ferrers. Ferrers. F E R R E R. Can you tell I'm going a bit mad in the rain? <coughs> what likely saved this part of the castle was its presence as a court for the area. It's still laid out with its old courtroom furniture inside and when everything else of the castle was torn down because it was old and useless, they specifically kept this building because of its usefulness as a court. It was a fortified location, it had a wall around it and they then built a couple of holding cells so that criminals could be kept there securely. It worked really well for them and it continued to be used as a court. Get this, this used to be a courtroom until 2001 for the Magistrates' Court. That's insane! I, for about a thousand years this was being used as a court. Bonkers! Don't run away, Umbrella, I need you. Architecturally, it's quite interesting. Um, you get a sense of what medieval brickwork was like. Inside, it's covered in plaster, so you can't get a sense of the uh, tremendous decoration that would have been inside, unfortunately. But there have been a few places where it was carefully removed to see what was underneath, and it shows off decorations which are the oldest in Britain, matched only by Chepstow Castle. This would have shown off remarkable wealth in the period that it was built. It was decorated inside with statues. There are numerous musical statues that go across on the top of each of the columns. Um, they all have a different period-appropriate instrument. Um, and at the end of the archways, where they meet the, the walls, um, they're decorated with what was likely to be a um, animal uh, stand-in for Henry II and his wife, Eleanor of Aquitaine. Don't confuse that with Eleanor of Castile, completely different person. Though I understand why you would. So this is what remains of Oakham Castle's Mott. It would have originally been topped by a keep, probably of wood, later of stone. And what I'm standing in now would have been the bailey, surrounded by a wooden palisade. This was constructed almost as soon as the Normans had invaded, as this site was considered important for the defence of their new conquests. And this is the view from up on top of the Mott, which probably would have been even more impressive if the English weather had held up its end of the bargain today. But even so, you can see quite a distance, and it really, really is quite nice. The hills off in the distance all shrouded in rain. It's a, it's a very English day today. <laughs> oh dear. Even though I knew what I was coming to see today, it was still surreal to me to walk into a room absolutely full of horseshoes. I mean, you can see, it's floor-to-ceiling horseshoes. And basically nothing else. Whitewashed walls, plain stone, horseshoes everywhere. That's rather surreal. Initially, the horseshoes started off very plain. Uh, they were basically just oversized horseshoes uh, etched with the name of the giver. 
Um, and then over time, more and more ornamentation crept in. Towards the end of the 1700s, it became fashionable to put uh, a coronet on top of the uh, horseshoe as appropriate to your rank, whether you were a, a baron or an earl or a duke or what have you. And of course, the most prestigious of these would have been a royal crown on top of one of the horseshoes. And there's people from all over here. You can run through the names and see a real who's who of different dukes and earls throughout history, many of them famous in their own right. They're not just limited to the nobility either. There's also ones from television programs that have been to the area and featured Oakham Castle. And there's one for the Remembrance Day, for the centenary of the war. And according to the tradition, if you were supposed to give up a shoe and you didn't, then the bailiff would come and take your horse's foot while you were asleep. So give up those horseshoes, or else. You may be thinking to yourself, Adrian, aren't you getting in t terribly wet? And the answer is yes, my umbrella is over the camera, so it doesn't get incredibly wet. Ha ha!